Our next episode is all about publishing, butterflies, books, and e-books. So Holloway did all the research work to produce these 18 volumes. Um, I was responsible for seeing them through the press and they were published, most of them, but not all of them, through the Malaysian Nature Journal of the Malaysian Nature Society, of which I was treasurer for some 25 years. And uh, a number of them were bound up separately, as you can see here, without the MNJ cover uh, for sale to other people. So that, in a way, has, has over the years taken up quite a lot of my time uh, dealing with this. And I've also been fairly heavily involved in updating and seeing through press uh, three separate editions of the classic Corbett and Pendlebury's The Butterflies of the Malay Peninsula. The first volume was relatively thin and produced in the 1930s. The second volume was significantly thicker and produced in 1958, I think. And I had a copy of this with me when I went to Labuan. When I came out here, it became evident that the book was completely out of print and it was impossible to get in the UK. The world expert at the time was a man called John Elliott, who was a retired uh, army officer who served here both before and after the Second World War, who I had come across in the course of identifying our material on Mount Kinabalu. So I was luckily able to persuade him to rewrite the book fairly thoroughly. Here's the third edition, which was the late 1970s, and the fourth edition, which was 1994, same cover. So that was the fourth edition. By the time that was out of print, unfortunately, Elliot was dead. And so in the last two years, um, we managed to recruit a couple from Sri Lanka called George and Nancy van der Porten who have written uh, very well-received books on the butterfly fauna of Sri Lanka. And I was able to persuade them to uh, re-edit Elliot's fourth edition. And this was done completely online. And this is the result of a very handsome volume, uh, which came out about uh, 15 months ago. Re-editing meaning that you have to rename the, the butterflies as well and stuff like that? Not necessarily rename. Uh, some of the species require renaming. Um, they produced a completely new set of photographs, upper side and underside of all the species. And all the additional information which has come to light uh, since Elliot's fourth edition in the 1990s. So, one way or another, I've been fairly heavily involved in entomological work and um, publications and printing. Beautiful books. Mm, congratulations. Wow. Really, that one has beautiful colours. The way it's, you know, it's the pages are put into colours. But do the colours mean that we are, they are of different species and they are of different names? And, and do, they, do they belong to the same species? No. We've ah. got to distinguish between specimens and species. There, you see, these are browns, yeah? yeah? And then, okay, these are browns. And then they've got this, see? The spots it. Well, those are all different species. The, oh! Zip yellows. There are 1,051 1, recognised Malaysian species of butterflies, West Malaysian species. Which means that this one is different from this one? 
on this one? Uh, no, because actually you just happen to choose the one which is so-called polymorphic. The male is similar throughout its range. These are all females of different forms. Oh, I see. But these, you see, the, the number here, this indicates a different species. And one, two, three, four, five, six, all of these are different species, although superficially they may look as though they're very similar. Mm, so beautiful, my God. Yeah, but I still don't like them. <laughs> I hope you have found this episode engaging and see you at the next one. <laughs>